Hello everyone, before I start the video, I just want to let you know that I am back home for the summer and will be returning to NYU in the fall. I was going to make a video about how my experience in the spring went at NYU, but I wanted to come back with something a little bit more exciting. But if you're still interested in that, let me know down in the comment section and I will definitely make a video about it. So in this video, I am ranking all of Taylor Swift's albums. I am ranking the original Fearless album and Taylor's version of Fearless. I am taking opinions into account as well, such as the ratings on Pitchfork and taking into consideration how many Grammys the album has won. These aren't in order on my screen, but we're gonna go in order of release date. So the first album we have is Taylor Swift, the debut album. Um, this album really launched her career, put her out there. It's got Tim McGraw on it, Picture to Burn, Taylor was still in her country days. Now, I don't believe this is Taylor's best work, and I, you know, I don't know Taylor Swift, but I'm sure she would agree with me too. Like, your first album is never, like, the capture of your best work entirely, um, and I think that goes for a lot of albums. I'm going to go ahead and put this album in forever and always my favorite and <laughs> I always, I have these little puns on the side to represent superior great you know so we have an untouchable album forever and always my favorite. This album is perfectly fine. This album is trying and sad beautiful but tragic so I don't think I'm gonna be using the sad beautiful but tragic. I just thought it was funny so I put it on there. <laughs> After Taylor Swift's debut album we have Fearless. Okay this is the original Fearless. It's one of those albums like if you watched my <laughs> Queen album like Night at the Opera I love that album. I don't think there's anything wrong with that album and that's how I feel about the original Fearless. Now I know Taylor doesn't own it and Swifties please don't come after me. Um, but there's something raw and authentic about this album that like sets it apart from the re-recorded version. I love this album with all my heart, so it is going into the top seed, an untouchable album. After Fearless, we have Speak Now. But you know, I have much more of a uh, Speak Now appreciation. Um, there are songs on there that like I forgot <laughs> existed. I don't know why, um, but you know, Dear John always hits hard. Um, back to December, all great songs. Um, I'm gonna put it in the second seed, Forever and Always My Favorite, <sighs> just because I don't think I could put it in the top seat. Like it's not something that I can listen to over and over and over again. So I'm gonna put it in the second seat. Now this is a little bit lower than what is on the pitchfork thing. Like this is where I kind of disagree. Um, Speak Now is second after Red. So Speak Now is like ranked really up there. And I think it's because like Speak Now did really, really well. Fearless is third. So uh, I disagree there. We, but we, we can agree to disagree, right? After Speak Now, she released Red. Now we all know that Red is a, you know, a life-changing moment for Taylor Swift, leaving the country, going into the pop. There's so many hits off of Red, but it still like failed to win a Grammy. It's ranked number one on Pitchfork. This album did so incredibly well. I think it's really good too. I really do. But I just don't, I don't know. I feel like it's too mainstream and it might just be because I've listened to it way too many times and there's too many songs on there that have been overplayed. I'm gonna put it in the forever and always my favorite, you know, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm very, very sorry. Up next we have 1989. 1989 is amazing. <laughs> it is one of those, I don't know, it's one of those albums, one of those albums that I can listen to over and over and over again. And let me just say that is a key factor into deciding if it deserves the number one seed. It's if I can listen to the album over and over and over again. And I can do that with 1989. Red, not so much, you know, and 
I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Blame the radio for playing those songs too much. I don't know. Um, so 1989's going into an untouchable album. After 1989, we have Reputation. Uh, I'm starting to like Reputation. Um, Reputation got a 6.5 on Pitchfork, and I can see why. I see why it did bad. Because I remember the night, like, hearing about Taylor Swift, like she's releasing a single and I stayed up till midnight and I listened to Look What You Made Me Do <laughs> and I was disappointed, <laughs> okay? So it kind of set the tone for the whole album, but I'm slowly starting to appreciate it more and more, like delicate, genius, getaway car, genius, New Year's Day or New Year's Eve, what's it called? New Year's, whatever great songs so i'm gonna put it in this album is perfectly fine um, because it has room to improve um but it's just not there yet for me lover okay <laughs> when this album came out i was like it felt like a breath of fresh air it was right after reputation and i was like this is the taylor i know <laughs> You know, and look, moving on from Reputation, I understand where the album was coming from. Like, I totally understand that she was in this dark place, so she wrote all these songs about that place. But, you know, I, it's just not my jam right now. So, Lover. Um, I'm going to put Lover in Forever and Always My Favorite. There are songs on Lover that I, you know, I do skip. I, I love the album. I really, really. Now we have Folklore. Folklore, I have been listening to on repeat since the day it came out, and I just can't stop listening to it. One of my favorite albums ever by Taylor Swift. This album, like, was like, it was like the um, Speak Now to Red transition. Like, I feel like there is a lover to Folklore transition because this album is completely different from Red, Lover, Fearless, 1989. It's like, she didn't have, when she was talking about this album on interviews, she didn't like have that song that was meant to like be played on the radio, to be a transition song on stage. She just wrote songs that she thought were good and she recorded them. And I think it's that rawness of the album that I really appreciate. So it is going into an untouchable album. This also got an eight on Pitchfork, so I agree with Pitchfork there. Now, Evermore. Evermore is not as great <laughs> as Folklore, but I still listen to it um, pretty often. There are songs on there that I do skip, but you know, I'm gonna put it on forever and always my favorite because it's a great second to uh, Folklore. Fearless, Taylor's version. There are songs on that album that I'm like, why Taylor, why did you keep it in the vault? Like Mr. Perfectly Fine and that's when with um, Keith Urban, I love those songs, but it's like the rawness of the original, like fearless and the like, you know, you can hear like the youth in her voice and it's not as produced. You know, sometimes I like really enjoy albums that are not as produced. You know, fearless is great, but I feel like some of those songs are better in the other form. So I'm gonna put it, and forever and always my favorite just because i have mad respect for taylor for re-recording all of her songs and doing such amazing work <laughs> as you can see nothing made it into the two bottom tiers and that's just because i'm a huge taylor swift fan and i might be a little biased um i'm really interested you know to see others opinions and to see if any of you guys would have rated these lower or higher um swifties don't come after me i know how passionate you are um but this is just my opinion <laughs> and at the end of the day it really doesn't matter i'm just doing this for fun if you have any video ideas of what you want to see next if you have any video ideas of what you want to see next let me know down in the comments it means a lot make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel i look forward to seeing you guys next week and in the meantime have a great weekend bye